If you enjoy our videos and podcasts and would like us to continue putting out regular quality content, head over to patreon.com forward slash aircrewinterview where you can donate monthly and in return you will get rewards ranging from early interview viewings, bonus clips, credited as a producer and much more. Thank you and enjoy. Another thing that I enjoyed uh, on all fighters was to take them to the limits. And how I did that was after 200 hours, it's a regulation 200 hours on type when you're allowed to do the function check flight or the air test. And I had 200 hours on virtually all, all types of fight, more than 200 hours on all types of fighters. And mostly uh, when you take an aircraft up for an air test, what you do is you're supposed to, uh, you know, test the whole envelope. Mm -hmm. Even if it's an engine change or it's this or that, you have to theoretically. But then there's not enough fuel to stay up in there for that long and check each and everything. So I thought uh, if it's an engine change, do the engine checks and then just get to the airframe thing and take it to the limits, speed limits, G limits. And for me, the speed limits used to be uh, low level. If it was 700 knots, 750 knots, the Mirage was in Mark 1.15. On the, wow. Uh, we used to fly over the sea. And I've done Mark 2.1 a number of times in the Mirage. Uh, it's a very good, despite being under powered aerodynamically for high speed, it's a perfect design. If only it had a more powerful engine, which of course came later as the Mirage uh, 2000. But uh, this was no problem uh, taking it up to Mark II, certainly in colder, colder weather. In uh, hotter months where the temperatures were up as high as about 45 degrees, it would take a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, in winter months, no problem. And I did that in the F-16, Mark II, uh, and a little less in Mark II, actually. I have to claim because otherwise they'd you know, get after me. How dare you say that the Mirage uh, F-16 <laughs> can't do Mark II? It does. <laughs> Uh, and the F7 I tried, it could, except for the fact that it doesn't have enough fuel. I went right. up to Mark 1.8, mm -hmm. and now if I had started to turn back, I would have lost uh, my speed. So there was no po no possibility of doing Mark 2, which eventually I did by going from one base to the other. When wow. the ferry flight, I just had to go Mark 2, and uh, I was clocking something like 1200 knots, and uh, the radar. And the ground calls me and says, uh, sir, uh, you know, repeated my call sign. Are you the same guy? Your IFF code, is that the same? I said, yes, I'm you know, squawking so-and-so mode and so-and-so code. And he says, uh, sir, check your speed. I said, anything wrong? And he comes up with uh, a call. He says, I think it's anomalous propagation. In winter months, you have... Anomalous propagation where the waves, because of uh, cold weather, uh, they just sort of bounce up and down like in the ionosphere and uh, they give false returns. So he said, maybe I'm getting wrong speed. I said, how much are you getting? He says, sir, 12 knots, but it can't be. No, I said, it is. <laughs> it is 12 knots. He said, uh, sir, 12 knots, yes, never seen a blip going 12 knots. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, once you can see that, and so from there I landed at the base, which was about 130 miles, 140 miles from my home base, and landed on the other side. So I've done Mark II on all these uh, fighters uh, also. Oh, that must have been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs>